So Apple just released iPadOS 16 Beta 6 to all developers to test out, to try out, and see if there's any performance improvements. And of course, we're gonna be testing out Stage Manager, which you see right behind me, and see if there's any stability improvements because that's the number one thing that I personally care about. So without further ado, let's talk about it. So the first thing I'd like to do is talk about the build number and then also the size of the actual update itself. So from a size standpoint, this is a little less than 500 megabytes. So give yourself at least one gigabyte of extra space in your stores to get this installed and installed correctly with zero issues and zero hiccups. Overall, very simple to get it installed, very quick and zero issues on my end. And then from a build number perspective, we have 20A5349 lowercase b. And that little B moniker at the very end of the build number indicates that we're getting closer and closer to that RC build, and then ultimately that final release. So as Apple iterates on the betas, we're probably gonna get a few more betas because there is a rumor that Apple's going to be delaying iPadOS 16 until October, versus with iOS 16, we should be getting it in September when Apple releases the iPhones, and then the Apple Watch Series 8 or 8 Pro, whatever they're gonna call it at that point. But that is the build number we're dealing with and we're getting closer and closer to that final edition. But this should overall be a quick video because from a what's new standpoint, there really isn't anything new. Once we get further into these beta updates, this is all gonna be stability improvements, bug fixes to make sure that everything is stabilized from when they do release it to the entire public. So from a what's new standpoint, the only thing that I could personally find was that we got three new splash screens. So we got a splash screen for the Maps application, which talks about these new landmarks that you can now view inside of Apple Maps and then also multiple stops in a route, which is, again, and if you've been using Google Maps for a while, you know that that's been there for a long time, but Apple is now implementing the multiple stop route, which is great to see. Another splash screen that we got was the inside of the Find My application. So it's letting us know that now AirPods of any kind, so AirPods, AirPods 3, AirPods Pro, AirPods Max, you can now actually locate them individually. So not really for the AirPods Max, but if you have individual earbuds, you can actually locate them individually with the Find My app. And then also it's letting us know that the new Maps is actually pretty much just a ported over version of the Maps application. Because before it was a much more watered down version of Apple Maps inside of the Find My application. And then lastly, we got a new splash screen for the Reminders application, which is something that I don't really use too often, but we got a few new things which I think would help out from a productivity standpoint, especially the smart suggestions slash reminders. So obviously, whenever you're using an Apple device, it's supposed to learn what your tendencies are, where you're at every morning, you know, when you have your coffee, when you finish work and things like that. So little by little, if you allow it to, Apple's reminder app will remind you on things that it thinks you need to be reminded of. So again, we're getting closer and closer to just your, your phone or your iPad doing everything for you. So those are the only real things that we saw that were actually new and they were just splash screens. So nothing new in terms of a function standpoint or a feature list, because again, we're on beta six. So the next thing I wanna talk about is actually Stage Manager to show you guys that it's actually improved from a stability standpoint. So one of the first things I do wanna show off is with Stage Manager is just that it's a lot more stable than it was before. So beta six gives us a new iteration, which allows us to, again, play with multiple things because before, Basically, if I went out of order or if I tried too much with Stage Manager, then it would kind of just reset on me and I would get the springboard reset, which is basically just a way to reset the home screen without actually turning off the iPad itself. And that would happen a lot. Now again, it's still happening, but no actual data loss has happened to me when a springboard reset does occur, but it does happen on occasion. But overall, it's much more stable. The resizing of Windows is a lot more snappy. Now also when you're using a secondary monitor, and let's say you have that section turned off where the dock goes away if you have an application open, I personally could not find a way to get that dock open again unless I went to the three dots and clicked on minimize and then add a new application. So now if you actually go to the right or left of your secondary display and kind of scroll down or push down, the same way that it would appear on your iPad Pro, the dock will appear on your secondary display, allowing you to bring in a second, third and fourth application. And then also the app shelf on the left hand side, it gives you a lot more room to play with when using it on a secondary display. So you can see that with the app shelf on the left hand side or the quick shelf, whatever Apple's calling it, the windows will actually cover it up. And all you have to do is hover over with your mouse, hover there for about a second or two, it'll open up and then you can click and drag whatever application from your app shelf over into the main screen and start multitasking in that fashion. So overall, the stability of Stage Manager is almost there in my opinion. Once we stop getting these springboard crashes, then we'll be good to go. But again, if you guys wanna try it out, but from a productivity and from just a data security standpoint, I have never lost anything. And I edit every single video in LumaFusion on my iPad 
on the secondary display right behind me because I get a lot more usability being able to scrub through a timeline with a 44 inch ultra wide monitor, which makes my life just a little bit easier. But again, it has reset on me, but I've never lost anything. The moment it loads back up, I open up LumaFusion and everything is exactly where I placed it. So if you guys are worried about data loss with a beta update, Again, it is a beta, so do it at your own risk, but I would say that I personally have had zero data issues and data loss issues with Stage Manager and with this beta program. So take that with a grain of salt. But that is gonna do for this video, everybody. Like you saw, there weren't too many changes, if at all. We got a couple new splash screens, but the most important thing is that we got a lot more stability when it came to Stage Manager on the iPad Pro. Again, keep in mind, you need an M1 powered iPad for this to work, so that includes the 11 inch iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, and then also the M1 iPad Air. Everything else with any A12Z, A12X, A14, none of that is gonna be able to push and use Stage Manager because according to Apple, you need at least eight gigabytes of unified memory and the M1 chip brings that standard versus all the other chipsets, which are the A series of chips, all bring four and six gigs of RAM respectively. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys did enjoy it, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so that I know that you made it to the end. And leave a comment down below if you guys have tried Stage Manager. Are you excited for it? It's also gonna be on the new Mac OS. And let me know if you guys are gonna use Stage Manager on Mac OS. I think it's a little bit redundant and unneeded to be putting that on Mac OS. But I'd be curious to learn your opinions. But that's gonna do it. I'm Fernando. If you guys wanna watch some more videos like this, click on one of these two videos right here. But until next time, I'm out of here. Peace.